marching up to freedom land. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. We're gonna keep on walking. That was legendary civil rights activist Jesse Jackson at the age of 79 marching in the scorching heat with Parkinson's, mind you, to Senator Kirsten Sinema's office to demand that she stop supporting the filibuster. Now, the point of this march was to march to Kirsten Sinema's office and stage a sit-in. And that is exactly what Jesse Jackson did. And he refused to leave once he got there. And him, along with 39 other people, were actually arrested at Kirsten Sinema's office because of this. So that is dedication right there. Taking a stand and, you know, refusing to back down regardless of what the consequences are. And this is by far one of the most important issues right now, because if the filibuster is not abolished, then Democrats will not be able to enact voting rights laws such as the For the People Act. And this is important because the Republican Party is effectively rigging future elections in their favor with these voter suppression laws, and they don't have to do very much to retake the House in 2022. In fact, with gerrymandering alone by redrawing district lines in their favor, they can easily win back the House in 2022, but future elections will be perpetually rigged in their favor with these new restrictive laws. And they are specifically targeting things that drove up the vote in 2020. So this is incredibly egregious. We should be further consolidating democracy, further expanding suffrage to more and more people, but they're making it more difficult. And people like Kirsten Sinema, they're enabling that. And she's going to claim that she's only representing her constituents in her purple state, but that's not actually the case because a new poll from Data for Progress shows that 66% of Arizona voters support a primary challenger to Kirsten Cinema specifically because she refuses to stop supporting the filibuster. And I need people to understand how serious this issue is. If voting rights are not enacted at the federal level after the Supreme Court has repeatedly gutted the actual Voting Rights Act that we had before, if we don't get the For the People Act, then everything that we want is off the table if the GOP is able to cling to power by cheating. Medicare for all, not even possible. Green New Deal, not possible. Student debt cancellation, not possible. All of this is off the table if the GOP clings to power because they're not going to push for it. So if we even want a chance of getting anything that the left wants codified into law, we have to fight to protect democracy because the GOP is on a rampage against democracy. And if you think that I'm being hyperbolic, well, the math has been done. The numbers have been crunched and the laws that the GOP enacted will make it very easy for them to retake control of the states that they lost in 2020. So as Politico reports, after Georgia Republicans passed a restrictive voting law in March, Democrats here began doing the math. The state's new voter ID requirement for mail-in ballots could affect the more than 270,000 Georgians lacking identification. The provision cutting the number of ballot drop boxes could affect hundreds of thousands of voters who cast absentee ballots that way in 2020. And that's just in the populous Atlanta suburbs alone. It didn't take long before the implications became clear to party officials and voting rights activists. In a state that Joe Biden carried by fewer than 12,000 votes last year, the new law stood to wipe out many of the party's hard-fought gains and put them at a decisive disadvantage. Democrats in other states where similarly restrictive voting laws have passed are coming to the same conclusion. Interviews with more than three dozen Democratic elected officials, party operatives, and voting rights activists across the country reveal growing concern, bordering on alarm about the potential impact in 2022 of the raft of new laws passed by Republican legislatures, particularly in some of the nation's most competitive battleground states. And really, the title of the article sums the situation up. It's a quote. It says, we're fucked. And we are. If the For the People Act is not passed before 2022, we are fucked. Because the GOP, an authoritarian party who uh, has some members explicitly calling for a coup is going to easily retake control of Congress. And once they take control again, it's too late. The window of opportunity to pass the For the People Act is gone. And then they will continue to rewrite the rules in their favor. They've redrawn district lines. So for the next 10 years, they have an easy path to victory. And even if it weren't the case, 
that they were rewriting the rules in their favor to make them more electorally successful or increase the likelihood that they're electorally successful, even if the playing field were leveled. There's still a lot of issues with our democracy. We need a proportional representation system. We need to abolish the electoral uh, college. That's still disproportionately advantages Republicans. And on top of that, even if we got rid of all of that, there's still issues. The Supreme Court has already struck down the voting rights uh, legislation that was already on the books, right? They've gutted it numerous times so they can gut further provisions. So the deck continues to get stacked and stacked and stacked against us. And the For the People Act is the one piece of legislation that Democrats are pushing that will help keep our heads above water. But if they don't pass this because the filibuster does not get abolished because of people like Kirsten Cinema, then we're going to be in a very bad situation for a very long time in this country. Now, the problem is that the Democrats who aren't just outright directly enabling the GOP, like Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, aren't strong enough to actually effectively wage a campaign against Republicans. To his credit, Joe Biden has, I think, accurately characterized the situation as an attack and an assault on democracy, and he's correct about that, but he's not doing enough to apply pressure to people in his own party who are blocking progress. And the issue is that it seems like privately he's already basically admitted defeat. So the New York Times explains, in private calls with voting rights groups and civil rights leaders, White House officials and close allies of the president have expressed confidence that it is possible to out-organize voter suppression according to multiple people familiar with the conversations. So that's where we're at. Joe Biden, the president who has his bully pulpit, rather than doing more privately, he's basically saying, look, it's not going to get done. So we might as well just try to out organize the voter suppression, which is an effort that is not going to be successful. Now, the people who were advisors to Biden who were on the call that was referenced here, they claim, oh, well, you know, he's not saying that we should try to out organize voter suppression. He just said that that's one of the many tactics, but it doesn't matter. It's a distinction without a difference, a difference if he actually doesn't get this accomplished. Because if you allow people in your party like Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin to continue to uphold the filibuster, with Joe Bi which Joe Biden himself supports, by the way, you're not going to get the For the People Act passed, and then you will be shut out of power come 2022, come 2024. So the situation is absolutely, absolutely dire. And I applaud people like Jesse Jackson, who understands the gravity of the situation. If we lose our ability to actually make power changes in the country because our system is so skewed in favor of Republicans, then any progressive legislation that we want is not going to have a chance of passing so long as they control power. It's not like it's easy to get these things passed. It's seemingly impossible with Democrats in power. Obviously, that's why we're talking about the For the People Act, because they can't even agree on voter voting rights legislation because people in their own party are against it. But things get a lot worse. But at this moment, we still have our heads above water. So long as we can pass the For the People Act, we'll be a little bit better off. But if that doesn't happen, if people like Kirsten Sinema win, then it's going to be too late. Oh, man.